factory up at the top and all the way on the way. Welcome aboard everyone, my name is Sammy and I'll be your driver on the Safari Super Rocket Wildlife Reserve. This is our town and it is 1871 to protect the animals of the Harambe Village and conserve their land. Please remember to stay fully and completely seated at all times while we're out there, keeping those hands, arms, feet, and legs inside the vehicle and make sure your children are doing the same. Running their prey down to exhaustion. Should we see that guy? Also on the left behind the charming mound here, we'll see some stable antelope. They're born fairly light brown in color and will grow to be a darker brown, almost black into adulthood, with the dark face of the herd typically being the most dominant. On the right, we'll see some Patterson's eland. The eland is the largest antelope in Africa. The weight is 2,000 pounds and stands up to six feet tall on the shoulders. Watusi cattle, after the Watusi tribe, who are the first people to domesticate them. And they are the only domesticated animals that we'll see out here on the reserve. And see hiding up by the bushes just ahead. Those horns will grow to be up to 20 inches around at the base and about 3 to 4 feet each in length. And although they are quite large, they're actually fairly lightweight considering that they're honeycombed on the inside and filled with blood vessels. The blood will travel up into that, those hearts to cool down before traveling back into their body. It helps to better regulate their body temperature. in the grass there are spring box. They get their name because when excited they crawl, which is when they jump about 16 in the air repeatedly or up to 13 feet when they turn. We'll see what guys they pull past the bushes here. So again, there's a the spring box on the right and then the Ancoli cattle are here on the left.
On the right hand side, we'll see some white bearded wildebeest. They have one of the largest migration patterns in Africa with about one and a half million moving across the savanna each year. Within about 15 minutes after they're born, they need to be able to keep up with their herd along their migration. And then we would like to see the giraffes a little bit better up here. They're pretty active for most of the day, only sleeping about 30 minutes total each day. And they don't usually sleep for a few minutes here and there throughout the day totaling about 30 minutes. We will begin our journey at the Little Hickory Forest. The animals around here have some really cool colorings and markings, and those do a great job of helping them camouflage so that they stay safer from predators. We just want to keep our eyes wide open and cameras ready to go. On the right hand side, we'll see an okapi walking around. With the striped on its legs, the okapi does sort of resemble a zebra, but that's actually the only known relative of the giraffe. Up on the hill on the left, we'll see some bongos, those rust colored antelope with the horn. The lighter brown antelope without horns are greater kudu, and we can tell those are female greater kudu since, unlike the bongos, only male greater kudu have horns. There's some more bongos down the hill as well. Over here at the watering hole, take a look up on the ridge ahead of us. We'll see a black rhino a little closer up here. All right, as we pull up here, we'll see the black rhino up on the ridge to the left. As it's grabbing a snack, if it picks its head up again, you'll notice it has a narrow pincher-like jaw. They have a prehensile upper, upper lip. It's full of muscles to help them scoop things into their mouths and rip leaves off the bushes. Sadly, though, the black rhino, there are only about 5,000 black rhinos left in the entire world. Rhinos are still being poached for their horns, which are valued in certain regions on the black market for medicine. If you have been scientifically disproven, their horns are just made of keratin, so they actually have no medicinal value whatsoever. It'd be chewing on, like chewing on your hair or fingernails for medicine. It's totally useless. See some pink black pelicans over here, the big gray and white bird. They are colonial nesters, so you'll find them in pods like this of anywhere from 20 all the way to 500. So again, they're the big gray and white birds here. I'll see if I can find some more around the corner. Yeah, let's we'll see a few more pelicans over here as well as some hippos. Let's take a look just behind the island there. You can see the hippos floating in the water. Hippos will spend most of their day in the water and they can get, be completely submerged for about five to eight minutes at a time. The hippos tend, out, tend to come out along the riverbanks later in the day to look for food and they'll travel up to six miles each day to graze. Another one in the water over here. Ooh, down to the left over here, we'll see the Nile crocodile. You can see quite a few of them holding their jaws open. And what they're doing is releasing hot gases out of their mouths. They're cold blooded, so that keeps them a little bit more comfortable out here. These are the largest types of crocodile in the world, growing just about as long as a giraffe is tall. Just a reminder to keep those face coverings up over your mouth and your nose too while we're out here, please. We're heading out of the savanna over here, which stretches all the way from east to west Africa and it's a great place to look for some of the migrators. Let's see if we can find maybe some elephants, zebras, giraffes. And this really is the wild Africa we're working so hard to preserve since each animal out here is important to this ecosystem. 
the Watusi tribe, who are the first people to domesticate them, and they are the only domesticated animals that we'll see out here on the reserve. And see them hiding up by the bushes just ahead. Those horns will grow to be up to 20 inches around at the base and about three to four feet each in length. And although they are quite large, they're actually fairly lightweight considering that they're honeycombed on the inside and filled with blood vessels. The blood will travel up into that, those hearts to cool down before traveling back into their body and helps them better regulate their body temperature. because when I excited they cross, which is when they jump about 16 in the air repeatedly, or up to 30 feet in the air. We'll see them again as they pull past the bushes here. So they spring back on the right, and then the Ancoli cattle are here on the left. bearded wildebeest. They have one of the largest migration patterns in Africa with about one and a half million moving across the savanna each year. And then we will see the giraffes a little bit better up here. They're pretty active for most of the day, only sleeping about 30 minutes total each day. And they don't usually grab that straight for, for a few minutes here and there throughout the day, totaling about 30 minutes. And if you take a look up on the left, we'll see some mandrills as well. Mandrills are the largest and most colorful monkeys in the world. They're best known for the blue and red coloring on their nose and backside. rip the bark down to grab a snack, but they'll also poke holes right in the base of the tree to drink some water out of it. We'll see the wildebeest again through the clearing on the right as well.
check in front of us is holding for some zebras, it looks like. So we'll check out here for a second. We'll see some Hartman's Mountain zebras up there. Make sure everyone stands seated, please. So we'll see some Hartman's Mountain Zebras just up ahead. And as we get closer, you'll be able to see that they, their stripes don't quite reach all the way around. It's one way we can tell that they are Mountain Zebras. Their stripes are unique to each individual zebra, just like our fingerprints are unique to us. In coloring from... Looks like there's zebras that are finally heading out the road. Alright, what's the one? As we pull around here, we'll see the greater flamingos on the island here. And then the Hartman's Mountain Zebras will be out on our right. If you notice the great uh, flamingos among them, they are still pretty young. So it will take them quite a few, quite a bit of time to start to get back to these coloring. And once again, these are the Hartman's Mountain Zebras here on the right. Horned oryx are named for the scimitar sword, which is what their horns resemble. And they're typically found in the desert, but do migrate for food. And they actually go up to nine months at a time without drinking any water if they absolutely needed to. They don't usually go that long, but they could if necessary. Side. Take a look at the logs in the center there. Just to their left, there is a cheetah land down. It's pretty hard to see in the shade there. You can just see its spots. The fallen trees look just to the left there. Cheetahs are, of course, the fastest mammals on land, reaching speeds of about 65 miles per hour, but only for short distances. And there's some lions hanging out of here. You can see a male lion laying on the rock there in the center, and then there's a lion that's a little bit further up here. Lions are pretty inactive for about 18 to 20 hours during the day. They are big cats. And they do hunt at night with the female lionesses doing most of the hunting. Their daytime vision is about as good as ours, but at night they can see about six times better than us. On the right hand side, we'll see some white rhinos in a bontabok. A group of rhinos like that is called a crash. Let's we'll see if we can see them a little bit better on the other side. That bontabok is a relative of the wildebeest we saw earlier, believe it or not. Make sure you're gathering up all of your 
your belongings, check the floor, check your seats, check your pockets too. I know it got kind of bumpy out there and things tend to fall out. And I know you need to leave anything behind to take another trip to the reserve. Okay. On behalf of everyone here at Kilimanjaro Safaris, I'd just like to say Asante Sana, thank you so much for joining us today, everyone. Make sure to come back and see us again sometime. And remember that no two safaris are ever the same. The animals are made certain of it. Hello.